Good day and welcome. Today, we're continuing our discussions on visible light, focusing on how light interacts with different materials. We'll be exploring opaque objects that block light and create shadows, as well as transparent substances that allow light to pass through. Here's a question for you. Can you think of any objects around you that are opaque or transparent? Share your examples in the comments below. Stick around until the end for some thought-provoking questions to test your understanding. Challenge yourself and see how well you've grasped the material, it's a fantastic way to boost your confidence. For more discussions on visible light, check out the links in the description. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss our weekly uploads. Let's get started. When light hits a surface, three main things can happen. First, light can be reflected, which means the light bounces off the surface. This is what happens when you look in a mirror, as the light bounces back to your eyes. Second, light can be absorbed by the surface, which means the energy from the light is taken in by the material. Dark surfaces, like a black tarred road, absorb most of the light that hits it, which is why they feel hotter in the sun. Finally, light can be transmitted, which means it passes through the material. For example, when light hits glass, some of it is reflected, but most of it goes through, allowing us to see through windows and view objects on the other side. Let us move on and talk about opaque objects. Opaque objects do not allow light to pass through them. Opaque objects absorb or reflect light. In some cases, they can do a little of both, that is absorbing some light and reflecting some light at the same time. Common examples of opaque materials include metal, clay, bricks, wall paint, and cardboard. These materials do not let any light pass through, which is why you cannot see through them. When light hits an opaque surface, some of the light's energy is absorbed by the material. This can cause the material to warm up. When light hits an opaque object, the part of the light that isn't absorbed by the material is reflected back to our eyes. This reflected light is what allows us to see the object's color and texture. For example, a red apple appears red because it reflects red light while absorbing other colors. Opaque substances cast shadows on the side facing away from the light source. If light is absorbed, it means that the light is unable to travel any further once it has reached the opaque object. Umbra is the darkest region of a shadow where light is completely blocked. Penumbra is the region where only a portion of the light was blocked. Surrounding the umbra is the penumbra, a lighter shadow where only a portion of the light is blocked. This happens because some light can still reach the edges of this region, creating a softer, less defined shadow. The color of opaque objects comes from the color that they reflect. All black objects absorb light so no light will travel from that object to your eye. When no light waves reach your eyes, the brain interprets this image as black. Opaque objects form shadows on the side that is turned away from the light source. A shadow forms when an object blocks light from reaching behind it. A shadow is the dark area visible on the ground or screen when light is blocked by an object. Shadows are formed because light travels in straight lines and opaque objects do not transmit light. Light is needed to form a shadow. A shadow shows the shape of an object. Because light travels in straight lines, the parts of the object that block the light prevent it from passing through, creating a dark area called a shadow. The shape of the shadow directly matches the shape of the object because the light is only able to pass around the object, not through it. The shape is formed by light rays that pass the edges of the object. This is why a shadow clearly shows the shape of the object that is blocking the light. So, the shape of the shadow is influenced by the shape of the object that blocks the light. These factors influence the size of the shadow. 1. How close the object is to the light source. 2. The position of the light source relative to the object, for example, whether it is above or at the same level as the object. A common experiment used to explore how shadows are formed uses a torch, an opaque object, such as an apple, and a white wall or screen in a dark room. The torch is first turned on and directed toward the white wall, which becomes bright as a result. 
The wall, or screen, brightens when the torch is shined onto it because the light from the torch hits it directly, illuminating the surface. An opaque object, such as an apple, is then placed between the torch and the wall, leading to the formation of a shadow on the wall. The shadow is dark because the opaque object blocks the light from reaching the wall. As no light passes through the object, the area behind it remains dark. By moving the object closer to the torch and then closer to the wall, changes in the size of the shadow are observed. When the object is moved closer to the torch, the shadow becomes larger. Conversely, when the object is moved closer to the wall, the shadow becomes smaller. Therefore, the size of a shadow depends on the distance between the object and the light source or wall. A larger light source would produce a softer and less defined shadow. The edges of the shadow might appear blurred, and the overall shape may be small and not sharp. As we have already seen, the position of the light source relative to the object, for example, whether it is above or at the same level as the object affects the size of the shadow formed. So, when standing outside in the same place at different times of the day, the length of your shadow changes due to the position of the sun in the sky. Early in the morning, the sun is low on the horizon, causing your shadow to be long and stretched out because the sunlight hits you at a low angle. In the afternoon, as the sun moves higher in the sky, the angle of the sunlight becomes steeper, resulting in a much shorter shadow. This change in shadow length is due to the varying angles at which sunlight strikes the ground as the sun moves across the sky during the day. Let us move on and talk about translucent objects. Translucent objects are objects through which light is partially transmitted. Translucent substances are materials that allow some light to pass through them, but not enough to see clearly through the material. The light that passes is scattered in all directions, causing a blurred or diffused image. This scattering occurs because the microscopic structures within the material spread the light, making the object appear blurry or cloudy. You can partially see through a translucent material, but the details of objects on the other side are not clearly visible. Examples include x-rays, frosted glass, thin fabrics and wax paper. A plastic shopping bag, for instance, allows some light to pass through, but not all. Translucent objects are also known as semi-transparent, allow light to pass but scatter it in various directions, preventing you from seeing objects clearly on the other side. Light passes through transparent substances, such as glass, clear plastic, cellophane, clean water. These substances are clear, which means you can see through them without any distortion. Air is also transparent. Transparent object transmits all the light. Transparent objects are objects through which light can pass without any colors being seen. A small amount of the light can be absorbed or reflected, but most of it goes straight through. Transparent materials do not form shadows. Windows are made from transparent glass, allowing light to enter a room while also letting people see outside. Clean water is transparent, allowing light to pass through it, which is why we can see objects submerged in water, like fish or rocks. We've come to the end of today's lesson. Before we wrap up, here are some questions to test your understanding. Feel free to pause the video as you work through them. This section reinforces what you've just learnt. In the next video, we'll be diving into absorption and reflection of light. Be sure to check the description for the link and more videos on related topics. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss our weekly uploads. Thanks for watching, and take care.